Yeah, big welcome to you, my dear Capricorn. The sun, when we look at it, we see the constellation Aquarius behind it. And the moon, which gets the light from the sun, we see the constellation Capricorn behind it. The journey is outwards again, because last time you had Capricorn sun and new moon both in your sign. And the message was, let the power of the light and dark bring you into a total equilibrium. And it means that you have realized something with the sun as that light and the moon as that complete dark, both being in your sign, brought you a deeper understanding of what all of this is really about. Now you can see that you are the 15th major arcana and Aquarius here. The star is the 17th major arcana. So we have both times Jupiter, the 10, and then here the 5, the Hierophant, the 5 senses, or the 7, which is also the chariot, or then here the seventh chakra. And the numbers really don't lie. The numbers are really letting us always know how important it is to understand what numbers bring. And for you, you get attached to the five senses because sometimes we cut ourselves off the source and the snake is pointing at the third eye, which is then that one of the Wheel of Fortune or even the Magician that is letting you know, well, here you find the liberation. Here for Aquarius, it's about being the star, being here in the seventh chakra and knowing that here Apollo sits in front of the Taj Mahal and he's looking out. And so the sun being here in the star, the sun is a dwarf star so is really letting you know, okay, the message to bring myself up into my third eye is now really important. Aquarius is getting ruled by Uranus. Uranus is a generational planet and Uranus brings us always uh, the new beginnings. And Pluto has moved into Aquarius and Pluto is also a generational planet and will be at the end of November staying 20 years in Aquarius and Pluto is all about the mystic, the shadow side, the looking deeper into what we do right when someone dies, how do we reconcile with that kind of loss and so here the building of the Taj Mahal is just like um, a, a building that was built for a queen, for the beloved, right? For um, someone that was really important to that person, right? And so the story itself is quite extraordinary. You are ruled by Saturn. Saturn is uh, always the father Saturn are the um, borders, are the lessons. And so it's really important for you to understand that, yes, you are challenged through the five senses constantly to really bring yourself into the third eye. Really, that's where your liberation is. Now, the yoga position for Aquarius is side plank. We stretch ourselves out like a star. And for you, I gave you the dancer pose. You want to bring yourself up to the third eye, not working up, but dancing yourself up. Your court card is the Queen of Pentacles. And the Queen of Pentacles is connected with the 10th house of career and success and you see how you are reaching up for the sun right reaching up for that dwarf star and so here this is gonna let you know hey maybe you are a star yourself because you're holding that pentagram up 
and is actually giving you the power to be um, successful, right? Because you are as Capricorn the boss, right? You can rule, you can delegate, you can actually bring to the people the amazing energy of why not? We can be successful in all of this, right? And so if your birthday is between December 12th and January 8th, she is your court card, right? But of course, if your birthday is before or after, I have listed all the court cards down below in my description. On the position of Uranus, I'm going to pull a card out of the Cary Yale Visconti. And the interesting thing is that I have on the Fool already the Visconti Sforza Tarot. These are restored cards and these are photographs of the original cards that are falling apart. And so they are not restored, right? They look really like they are falling apart. And so I want to bring awareness back to these cards because the interesting thing here is that uh, they're from the 15th century and all the court cards, right, the king, the queen, the knights and the pages all have masculine and feminine personalities and I find that quite important because a lot of decks have just a masculine king and a feminine queen and it's connected with the zodiac signs so why shouldn't there be a feminine Capricorn or a masculine Capricorn right because I mean it doesn't make sense and so I found it really powerful to see that these cards in the 15th century were already including the female and the male perspective in the court cards, right? And so for me, it was important to bring that back. So you are coming up in the position of Uranus and Uranus, that new beginning that I can do now a new endeavor. I can start something completely new. I can be a star myself. This is Apollo sitting in front of the Taj Mahal. So there is hope, but you always have to recognize the attachment that this figure brings because it's the five senses and of course then here the third eye the sixth sense is the liberation and so you see here that the devil is attaching the couple that's actually the um, husband and wife that created this deck as a gift to each other after a 10 year marriage. And the 10 is an important number for you because you are the 10th house of career and success. And career and success makes us attach to the five senses, right? And so Uranus is literally shining a light and saying, have a look at what are you attached about because when I now take the card on the fool the two of wands it's almost saying you need to unite these two so that then the three is appearing because the two of wands is connected with the constellation Mars in Aries and Mars in Aries is the push forward, the union of the duality between masculine and feminine. And when they unite, when they work together, they can liberate themselves from the attachment or rather from the cutting off of the source. 
because the third eye is here on the vase. And so we can liberate ourselves out of any attachments. And so the two of wands are literally saying, yes, do that. That's what comes here as an empowerment and planning new endeavors, planning now to recognize that, of course, you are here. The six, the 15 becomes the six. And so the six and the two is then an eight. And so Uranus is bringing the infinite empowerment for you to recognize that the 17 becomes an 8 as well. And so the fool is saying, well, take that step. Go. Take that risk to liberate yourself out of this kind of attachment. To awaken to something that is now beyond, right? Because that's what these two horns up here uh, are saying, right? There's not one horn, there are two horns. And that's what the duality brings us, right? Duality is saying, well, here, um, with Mars, with that push forward through the wand, taking action to undo this attachment. And then the eight here is giving you the, the hope. We don't let go of hope ever to shine like a star up in the sky, right? To dance yourself up into the third eye, right? That's where you learn to understand when you dance yourself up into the third eye, you can liberate yourself. And so this is what's coming here right at the beginning through Uranus, through the Fool. Then on the position of the Magician comes here the Crow, the number 13. The 13 is the transformation of Scorpio. And so the Wheel of Fortune and the Empress, right, together create a four. And so Mars in Aries the four right aries is the emperor is bringing you well then this crow is looking into the two of wands and bring you the solution because the 13 plus the one is the 14 and the 14 is temperance and temperance is sagittarius right it's before you and then the five is left so the magician is saying, well, through Mercury, because the magician is connected with Mercury, you will get the information through the crow that the five senses that you are constantly struggling with, that you are attached to, are necessary to uh, be looked at and always to be controlled at through the third eye through the inner eye that is floating here and bringing you always the message and the information. So I wanted to see what the crow is telling you and the eight of swords is coming up here. The eight of swords are pointing outwards. So you see here how she's actually trying to get out of this place to Crows are looking what she's doing and she's fighting, but she is pointed to the right outwards. And it's really interesting. Now you have one, two, three crows and the three is then again the understanding of the Empress, the understanding that here, for example, when we take the three heads, it's a triangle that's pointing upwards. The success that brings you up, the success, right, that attaches you, brings you out. And so here you get quite attached to something that maybe you need to look at a little more closer. Because the Eight of Swords... is saying, particularly when it's to the right, 
she has a tendency to act out a behavior or pattern even though she knows it won't work. A woman breaks her swords against the wall that she invented. The crows are laughing and offering a way out if she would only look around. And yes, you had a very big crow here coming and looking at the two of wands and it's almost like she's saying you need to act, you need to unite because here you have an eight and the eight came as an eight here of these two cards, right? The six and the two was the eight. And so the eight also came here through the eight of Aquarius, the star. And it's very interesting because we have here the five plus the 8 is again the 13, and the 13, the 4 is left. So the 4 from Aries, the Emperor, is literally bringing you the solution. That putting that sword against here, a wall is not doing anything. Have a look around, right? And that's where the crow is now as a close-up bringing you that these two crows are looking at you and saying, what are you doing? We brought you the information. You need to act. You need to act differently because this act is in your mind. And so change the way you are defending yourself against your own wall that you created. Wow. Okay. Then on the position of the high priestess comes the ace of wands. And so you got three ones, and the three is then the empress. So the emperor here that was left out of all the numbers, and now the three, it's kind of like saying, well, unite deep within you, the masculine and the feminine, right? To liberate yourself, to bring yourself up into a higher consciousness, because you have a two and a one, a three, up to a higher consciousness as well and you see here the three the triangle right the dualities and when we put the dualities together we can go up into the third eye the dualities very important becomes then the three the ace of uh, wands and the ace is that divine action plus in your intuition you act divinely because the three is in the 13 here as well, right? And so you understand what the message is because you fill in the blank. I just let you know what these cards and these numbers talk to you, right? And so the one plus the 13, the 14, the five, the five plus the eight, the 13, the five is left. So the five, as the five senses are telling you, you need to overcome those five senses and then you can liberate yourself. Then you are not attached anymore. Then on the position of the Empress comes here the Pope. And the Pope is the number five, art, five senses. And he also has a triangle here, right? And so the Empress... The three and the five is an eight, and so you have an eight here, right? The devil and the two of wands, and you have the eight here, <clears throat> and now you have another eight here with the empress, and the empress is connected with Venus, and Taurus is also connected with Venus. And so the eight is saying, do the things in a very beautiful way. Do the things so that you can be uh, reigning with love, that you can actually bring all the energies that are important to you right now to the people. And of course, then also to yourself. Because then on the position of the devil, the Capricorn energy, right, you 
you get here the Ten of Wands. And the Ten of Wands plus the Three of Wands is the Thirteen. And the Ten of Wands is the constellation Saturn in Sagittarius. And you had the Fourteen here with the Crow and the Magician, right? And that's the Temperance. The Temperance is letting you know when we are in our center, we can create um, empowered experiences, right? And so you become the six and the 10 is the 16, is the tower. Certain things need to go because you cannot get attached to whatever action you are taking here. And particularly, you, you cannot get attached to the 13 wants. It's like, no, you will uh, challenge yourself, right? And the transformation is imminent in the way you act, in the way you do things. So do things in a very conscious way, right? So that you then only have four left because the Ten of Wands is connected with the Tenth House of Career and Success. And so the 16 then becomes a 7 here. And the 7 is the Crown Chakra. The seven is opposite of you, the cancer, the emotional intelligence that you want to gain. Here you get a financial intelligence, but that's not going to make you happy. You need to go into an emotional intelligence, and that's the seven. And you will reach that moment when you get your full moon light from cancer, sun, right? And so you will see that Cancer is here letting you know, yes, you got to change that. Then on the position of the Queen of Pentacles comes the Ten of Pentacles. And the Ten of Pentacles is family and also inheritance, a lot of money. And this is a 10-10 portal plus the 10 here. So three times 10, there is a completion. There is something that's saying something is ending. Something, because this is connected with Mercury in Virgo. Something is ending and you got to recognize now you have a lot of money and you can play with this money and you will be successful. And you are successful because you are here, the career, right? You are Capricorn, the career personality, the boss. On the position then of the Aquarius energy, the star, comes the Queen of Wands. And it's the feminine Queen of Wands, which is Aries, right? And Aries has spoken to you. Aries has spoken here through Mars in Aries and of course also you get the Ace of Wands which is also here in a way connected with uh, Aries and so there comes a feminine empowerment the one right so it's kind of like here a one one this is also one when we take the zero away right the one is the one and only the one is that third eye that you now need to find the inner eye and Aries is going to help you to find that because here the star in your deck the wandering star tarot is bringing you that you can be that star you want to be the star when you go to the one and an Aries is helping you to achieve that the sun through Aquarius is bringing you Apollo sitting on the Taj Mahal, being the star, because the sun is a dwarf star, and that's where you're reaching up to the sun, the dwarf star. And that's why you're getting the help here. Now, the 17 plus the 1 is the 18, and you know deep in your subconscious that the moon is bringing you this information right now. Very important information, and the 18 turns into a 9 then you are arriving in the completion. Then you can show to the world that, yes, look at me. I am the queen of the stars, right? The dwarf star 
or the store. It doesn't matter. I am a queen and I can handle just about anything. Because then on the position of the moon comes this beautiful moon oracle. And it's the metox, right? Repairing the body, mind, spirit, the number 39. And so the 18 turns into a 9. And here we have the 3 and the 9, the hermit and the empress. Calculated together, we get a 12. That's the hanged man. So sometimes we got to dive into the ocean, dive into the water to cleanse. And the 3 is left. The 9 and the 3 again, the 12, the 12, the 3 is left. So the 3 is left here. And I want to see what happens when you cleanse. What happens when you do that detox from certain things, maybe from certain attachments. And again, the Ace of Wands came up again. So you have 10 Wands and 3 is 13 and one more is 14 Wands. If I calculate this wand of her, then it's 15, which is your number. But let's stay with the 14, temperance. Stay connected always with the changes and the challenges and the masculine feminine. United, that's what the nine is saying. When you unite here, this one ace and it's a reverse, it's this little child coming bursting out of an egg right and it's almost like you are not ready yet to really burst but you had that burst you had that moment and you knew what to do but it's almost like now after the detox you feel like oh my god something is making me a little bit more sensitive maybe you're not as right as pushy anymore because you feel like you've pushed yourself to a place that you don't want to bring yourself anymore the ten of wands is like saturn saturn in sagittarius and saturn is your planet so saturn is like okay no enough right and yes you do have the money to say okay i'm gonna do the detox i'm gonna take care of myself and so here the Ace of Wand is bringing you this one wand from the Queen of Wands. It's like, yes, you are ready to now arrive. And so the interesting part here is that we had the three and the one is the four. The four is Aries. Become like an Aries. Become like an Emperor. You know what to do. Because in the moon the Ten of Wands came, right, on the position of the uh, Capricorn, the devil. And so the Ten here plus the Three is 13, plus the One is 14, and again the Five is left. And so the Five is again and again the Five Senses. You're going to go through the Five Chakras, one, two, three, four, five, to get to the Sixth Chakra. That's the message here. Because then on the position of the sun comes here the child lying on the uh, chimney, the number 11, the inner teacher, the sun here, the 19 that becomes the 10. It's like a 1, 1, 1, right? But the 11 is the inner teacher, is giving you now the uh, understanding that you are allowed to arrive at yourself, right, in your own empowerment through an Aries or in your own uh, understanding of what Aries empowerment does within us. And so you have three times the one, but you also have a one here and you also have a one here. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, right, through the ten of ones and the ten of pentacles. Six times the one, six times the one. It's like, yes, you are understanding that the third eye is going to help you, is going to liberate you. And that's what the sun is bringing to you. The sun, which is in Aquarius, which is bringing you the star, right? Which is bringing you the eight. And so you understand very clearly that there is a big message here through the 11. And the message is, when I look into the Mother Peace Tarot, the Shaman of Discs, and the Shaman of Discs is the uh, Hierophant. 
is Taurus, the five, right? Senses again, but here he is the second house of worth, of self-worth. If you know the information, if you know who you are, you can literally, like a child, enjoy this moment here in this warm, cozy house with the fire, with the dog. And that's what the shaman brings you, the shaman of discs, right? And that's Taurus as the inspiration. Here comes an eagle that is giving you the information. You can rest, you can arrive, because the two of self-worth has brought the two here as well as that I take action. I know how I can bring information forward, right, in the self-worth. And then, of course, at the end, it's really interesting. You get here on the position of the world the eight of ones. So you have ten ones and two ones and two more. It's 14. 14 plus eight is 22 ones. And 22 is the fool. And so he is zero, but he's also the 22nd major arcana. There are 22nd major arcanas, right? And so he's zero and 22. And the two is here. And so you going into this two of wands, that's what you are learning here. And you are awakening to something quite profound, right? That you are going into you and doing it in a completely different way because you have three people here in this card. So you are realizing that she is also walking into this, right? The two of wands, which then creates here just ten ones, right? And ten ones, it's like the social status, the career, and the success. And so you are recognizing something. You are recognizing that the three and the eight is the 11 and so you have again an 11 11 and then you have eight ones and eight ones is the message from Aquarius the eight the infinity right there's an infinite amount of things to be done to be experienced but in the end only one life can experience all of it and so now you're rushing forward but recognize the 11, the inner teacher, recognize that you are rushing back to yourself and you are starting the cycle completely new because now this is the first reading, you're going to the right, you're going out to your full moon and you see here this beautiful planet because this is Mercury in Sagittarius and you really get the information through the crow because the crow told you to do only two things at a time, two, right? And you have here two um, crows, right? Though you have three crows. So the three crows bring you here then the understanding that everything has a meaning, everything has a sign, and that things are going to go really quick now outwards into the path of the full moon again, right? This is your first reading going out to the right again before everything was going to the left. Everything was going internally towards yourself. And now you're slowly going out right into um, the <laughs> opening the wall, right? And liberating yourself into what it is that you want to do and you want to go out again to your full moon, which then will be in your opposite sign of the month of Cancer. So I hope I see you in the next reading. That's when we get uh, Sun in Pisces. That's the path of love. Until then, I thank you so much for being with me. Namaste.